Hello and welcome to Ozpol Explained. I'm David, your off-brand version of Adam Savage from Mythbusters, and today I'm going to be doing a series of short explainers about not how something works, but how things don't work. I'm going to be busting some myths about the upcoming Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander voice referendum. Oh boy! I can imagine the comment section now. In any kind of discussion, there is just a chance for misunderstandings, and misunderstandings are therefore have the chance of developing into misinformation. It's natural, it happens, it's understandable. I'm not judging or blaming anyone for believing these things or being unsure if they're true or not. So this is a handy resource for you to be able to use to either, you know, double check yourself if something is accurate or, you know, maybe just send it to someone that you're arguing with on Facebook to be like, look, thankfully someone has already prepared an explainer for you. So please, consider listening and let's work together to dispel misinformation and just understand what it is we're voting on. Now, I'm not going to tell you how to vote and this information isn't there to change your vote. I just want us all to be informed people when we go to the polls and vote on the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander voice. There are plenty of opinions that you can have, I just hope that we all critically examine the fundamental basics and work from there. There's a lot of claims out there, so how do we sift through them and know what's real and what's misinformation? Here's a quick little litmus test that you can just broadly apply to things that you find on the internet or in real life. Does the claim say that the voice will be able to override or force a decision upon Parliament or just make something happen against the wishes of Parliament or the general public? In which case it's misinformation that has nothing to do with the voice. That's just not true. The voice is an advisory body, so if the claim is centered around this idea of control, then it's misinformation. It doesn't control, it doesn't force its will upon other institutions, especially not Parliament. It advises Parliament and the executive government. That is useful, that can have influence, and you can have an opinion about that influence, but you can't boldly claim it has control over something else, because that just doesn't work. It can't force a decision on Parliament, it has no legislative or veto power, and it can't be given that because that contradicts, like, several, several sections of the Constitution. It's not even up for debate, that is just a nonsense thing. But if you've never read the Constitution or don't have a good working understanding of it, you are more likely to be receptive to this misinformation. Maybe believe it, or at the very least to consider it as a possibility instead of shutting it down. That's the basic gist of it, plain and simple. Finding these myths to debunk this misinformation was sort of an interesting examination of how misinformation on the internet works. There is a subject, in this case it's the voice, and then on top of that there is a concern or fear placed upon it. It doesn't matter what that fear or concern is, as you'll see through this myth-busting series that like it can just broadly just be all sorts of things, like it can be adjusted to all sorts of different audiences or ideas and just rehash old fears. The fear or concern then creates this barrier, so the person who's already convinced of this imagined danger is then less likely to take on board any kind of explanation that just puts their fears to rest. People in the comments section will tell me that I clearly don't know what I'm talking about because I don't know the real danger of the control of the voice, when it's like, no, the Constitution really is not the way you think it is. The recurring theme of most of these episodes is going to be along the lines of someone made up a secret agenda of the voice and we're going to be powerless to stop it and government can't but do anything but accept everything the voice demands and ah, uh, you know, that's, that's most of it. So claims like the voice will have veto power or it's a third chamber of government. It's like, who told you that? Facebook? Don't trust Facebook. People don't know things there. I once joined a Facebook group that was called Understanding the Australian Constitution, and my goodness, let me tell you, no one in there had any idea how it worked. It was not very well named. <laughs> let me tell you, there's some interesting conspiracy theories. Again, the Constitution is not like a widely understood document, so this is all just a thing that happens. 
maybe you'll learn a few things and maybe you'll be able to help other people learn some things as well. I promise you it has the potential to be fun. Maybe. Who knows? So let me just be absolutely clear. The public, that is all of you, will not lose your ability to engage with and judge what the government has done. Every single election is an opportunity for you to use the power of your vote to express and respond to what decisions have been made since the last election. And in between those elections, you can create petitions, you can protest, contact members of parliament, and much more. Democracy is not being replaced or subverted. The Voice is a representative advisory body to better help Indigenous people's voice be heard on matters that affect them. That's its power to give advice. It can't be given legislative or veto or executive or judicial power. It just can't. How you then feel about that and how you want to vote, well, that's entirely up to you. But I hope that we all at the very least understand that fundamental basic truth of what the voice is and then work from there. So with that in mind, subscribe, comment down below and let's debunk some myths. Yay! I will of course put some citations in the description and also some resources for you to learn more and fact check on other things as well. So enjoy. Thank you so much to my supporters on Patreon and I'll see you next time.